Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today it's time for another weekly art prompt on the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So let me turn over to my overhead camera and I'll show you what the prompt is for this week. Okay, so the prompt for this week, week number six, is fractured. So acknowledge the broken pieces within. Embrace the mosaic of scars, for in the mending lies strength. Like a shattered mirror reflecting resilience, navigate the fractures with self-compassion. Heal with intention, unveiling the beauty that arises from embracing the complexities of your unique journey. I like that bit though. Embrace the mosaic of scars, for in the mending lies strength. The mending. <laughs> that might give me a few ideas for what I want to do for my art journal page for this month. Month? Week. <laughs> yes, we're weekly now, Mike. Um, so yeah, fractured, much like the, my, my mind at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to again just be working on this front section because when I get to um, the next section in my art journal, this will also be worked on and the prompts will go on that way so that all of the reverses will have one of the prompt cards on. So fractured. Yes, yeah, so I have a new um, heat resistant mat on my new oil cloth at the moment. Um, I haven't stuck it down yet because I wasn't really sure where <laughs> the best place to stick it down was going to be. It's bigger than my last one um, by quite a, a big... <laughs> quite a big chunk anyway enough of that right so let me go and grab a few bits and pieces to get started on the art journal page and then i'll be right back okay so to start off with um i have a sheet of um paper from an old sears and roebuck catalogue um i can't see a date on this but i think it's fairly old early 19 1900s i think i suspect so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip down the outside. So this page is all about medicines. It's all about healing. It's all about getting better, which is kind of in keeping. So you've got female pills for weak women, <laughs> complexion, beauty, nerve and blood maker. Nice. And then Dr. Hammond's nerve and brain pills, cathartic pills like it, wonder little liver pills. And again, um, Mr. M. Bain's famous blood pills. Yes. I always think of that lovely old fashioned word to describe people who peddle remedies, like a snake oil salesman. What's the old fashioned word? Oh, yes, mountebank. <laughs> Love it. Love that kind of old language that we don't use anymore and uh, it's, it's also since we're talking about health so somebody who thinks that their illnesses are a lot worse than they actually are not a hypochondriac that's just somebody who thinks they're ill all the time but somebody who thinks that their illnesses are a lot worse than they they actually are is called a valetudinarian <laughs> Love it, absolutely love it. Old language, it's great. So let's see, let's just tear a bit off the bottom there. Valetudinarian. Cool, that'll do as the background, I think. So let's grab some glue. Um, I think we'll turn that over because I think that's rather offensive for weak women. <laughs> so we'll use that as the back. Let's get rid of that. I love that. For weak women, honestly. Anybody would think that women were hysterical. Hysterically funny, yes. Right. So we'll have that as the background, I think. So we've got a grungy, torn, ripped kind of background. That's the, that's the page that we're playing with. So... I've got a selection of browns, um, yellow ochre, and an orange. We're going to put 
some nice kind of brown paint into the background. So we'll start off with a bit of dark brown, not a huge amount. I could do with some baby whites just on the hand and a little bit of water because we're going to water this down. We're not going, we don't want it full strength. So I've just, let's just, okay. Just had to quickly break off the filming there because Ian just called me. He's just arrived at his destination. He's gone to Whitby. Look at that, it's gone through. Well, okay. So after a couple of telephone interruptions, <clears throat> and the fact that the mat that I was using isn't waterproof, I've swapped back over to my old one for the time being, or until at least I can order a new one. So back to back to the original. So we were adding some of this dark chocolate paint to the background of this. Um, like I said before, I got interrupted to the point where I just thought, oh, what's the point in carrying on? Um, but this morning... It's now all quiet because it's Saturday and nobody's working, so nobody's bothering me today. So we'll say nobody, just the people that were bothering me yesterday aren't working today. So, <laughs> so it means I can carry on now without too many more interruptions. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go back through, adding in more of this brown paint just into the background. Go back over where I'd gone before. So just layering over some more of that darkness. There we go. That'll do. Right, so we'll get this dried off, get this cleaned up, and then we're ready to introduce some more colour. I've added two more colours to my work surface. So I've got bright orange and honey brown. Not that those colours are fixed or anything you could really use whatever colours you fancied so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of water next to them both and then just starting with the bright orange I can start coming in and layering some of that colour and while that's still wet I can then pick up some of that honey brown and just add a little bit of that in too just kind of lightening up that background just have to knock back some of that text a little more oh no Okay, so I'll get that dried off, cleaned up, and I'll be back. So now that that surface, let's try that one again, shall I? Yeah. Now that that surface is dry, <laughs> I'm going to add another layer of paint, this time using uh, my um, abstract grunge grid stencil. Well, it's not a stencil, it's a mask. Um, now, I'm often asked what the difference is between a stencil and a mask. Um, and the difference is with a mask, um, it's the outline usually that is what you're left behind with. So you're left with the absence of the shape of the mask. With a stencil, it's usually the um, absence of the carrier sheet. So it's the holes that carry the image, whereas this, it's the absence of the image. It's a kind of the opposite way around. Um, Julie Faye Van Bolzer did a very, very quick um, demonstration and explanation of the difference between a, um, a stencil and a mask on her YouTube channel a couple of years ago um, that I always link to if anybody ever asks, um, which somebody did this week. So I hope they found that useful. Right, so I'm going to hold that down and then just go through adding that paint into the background. And then lift that off so we've got a lovely kind of fragmented pattern there now but it's 
all within the same kind of warm colour register. So as the prompt is fragmented, I thought this would be a good use. Oh, fractured, not fragmented. <laughs> Forget what the old prompt is myself now. Um, yeah, well, still, still works, still fits. There we go. I like some of these shapes on the top, so I'm just gently Flicking and feeding. That's it. There we go. Lovely. Like it. Okay, so I'll quickly get this lot cleaned up, tidied up, and then I'll be right back. All right, so I just want to break up that background a little bit. So I'm just going to add a few splatters if I can find my fan brush. There we go. I had a whole raft of these fan brushes. They've all seemed to have disappeared over time. So maybe I need to order some new ones. That's a bit better. Let's get some white gesso, a little bit of water. And then we'll just have some of that in a controlled way. Just into the background. We don't need a lot. Just an incy tinsy bit. I've said it many, many times, art journaling is probably more about drying time and clean up than anything else. <laughs> okay, so I'll get all that dried off and then we'll be back. For the time being then, I've put aside the art journal page and I've got some corrugated cardboard. And I've already sketched out the shape of a heart onto this corrugated cardboard, um, mainly because it's um, Valentine's Day or St. Valentine's Day coming up fairly soon. So why not bring in that theme while we can? So what I've done here, I've got two colours. I've got bright salmon and I've got true red. So one is a kind of pinky colour and one's a red colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my heart a base coat of this kind of pinky salmon colour just to start off with. There we go. I was tempted to use the crackle seeing as it's fragmented, but seeing as I've used the crackle quite a lot recently, you guys are probably getting bored of it. So I thought, no, change tack. Do something different instead. I think my YouTube channel is turning into an advert for crackle, crackle glaze. <laughs> Okay. I'll do it for the first coat, I think. Doesn't take long to dry, and I'm not even going to bother cleaning the brush. Not thoroughly, anyway. So I'm just going to give it a wipe. Because I'm also using the same colour family on top. 
doesn't really make any difference there's a little bit of extra to the bright red there we go that should do us and then just pick it straight up and then it doesn't actually matter too much if you don't get it exact because you've still got that pinky undertone almost like a, a ground just using it's just a small like chisel edge brush I'm using just so I've got the edge using the edge of the brush to define my lines, my edges. There we go. In the middle there. That we missed. Because the texture of the actual corrugated cardboard is now coming through because it's got wet which I kind of like. All right, so let's get that dried off, cleaned up, and then I'll be back. Okay, that's dry. So I'm now going to cut it out. And the beauty with this now is that I've got that outline, but if I decide to just change the shape slightly, if I want that more pronounced, I can do that as I'm the dip up here. If I want that more pronounced, I can just go in and do it that way. Added that a little bit up there. There we go. Right, so let's get rid of all these cardboard bits. And then we're ready for the next step, which is I'm going to wet it again. I'm going to let that water just sit and soak just for a few minutes and then I'm just going to pick at the edges Probably would be better with maybe like a pokey tool or a small embossing tool like that where you can get underneath and start to lift and tear. So it's just starting to soak through now, so. <laughs> you can probably just dip in. Just 
Going a bit too far there, I think. And you can just flick it, tear it, pull it back. Reveal as much of that texture as you like, really. A little bit more over here, I think. You can see where it's all started to soak through. Okay, I kind of like that now because you can see the corrugated cardboard underneath. So I'll give that a quick blast with my heat gun. Get it dried off as much as I possibly can, then I'll be right back. Okay, so next, what I want to do is just come back in with that true red again. Just put a little bit on the mat, and then this time <clears throat> I want just a small, actually that same brush would work probably just as well. Pick up a little bit of that red paint on the brush and then I'm just going to dry brush and just pick up the pattern of that corrugation again. There we go. My kids. Okay, let's get it dried off. All right, so what I want to do next is just, just go around the edge of that heart. Just to kind of give it a bit of a distress, distressed edge. I'm using Versafine Vintage Sepia here, but I think actually, looking at it, it's been contaminated. There's some green in there for some strange reason. But it looks like it's separated on the pad. Maybe it's, it's just the actual ink itself that's separated because it is fairly old. bits and pieces now because I tidied up recently and <laughs> now I can't find anything <clears throat> but that's always the case isn't it right I now want to glue that onto my background hopefully my glue hasn't gummed up sometimes it does I'll just give it a shake just in case. There we go. So it's just school glue, Elmer's school glue that I'm using. 
nothing um, fancy or expensive. Right, so what I'll do on that as well is I'll actually just lay that on the top and then I'll put that to one side for now and then I'll bring in um, the next part of my paraphernalia if you like. So this is a short four line poem that I found when I did a search for poems about fractured hearts because I knew I wanted to use a heart shape and you obviously the, the, the prompt was it is fractured I keep wanting to say fragmented so there you go <laughs> Right, so let's just quickly whip the excess paper off those. I'm not being particularly um, careful about straight lines. And I'm just putting the white paper over there, which I don't need, and I'm keeping the, the bits that are part of the poem at this side, so I know which is which. Okay. keep saying I will treat myself to a new label printer. My old one, which I used quite a lot in the early days, um, I got kind of bored with the font because it was only, it was one of those where you could only have one font. And I know you can buy label printers now that will allow you to change the fonts. So you can print out your quotes with different fonts and different sizes, if you wish. So I realise I hadn't put the um, that weight back on the heart. Okay, so those are all bits that I don't need. Tidy that up, get rid of that. Okay, so what I want to do is just come back in again with that distress ink. Well, it's not distress ink, with the ink just to go around the edges. So, and it's definitely showing up green. So I'll just go around all four of these and then I'll be right back. I'll probably just fast forward. Okay, I think that's glued down and held long enough. So what I'll do now is just add a little bead of glue. So I'm going to space the quote. So top and bottom line will go at bottom. And then these two, I think, actually I'm going to break that up. So I'm going to 
let's add that there. And then do the same thing for this one. Just cut in between I like adding poetry to my pages. It just it's just a little bit more meaningful than just a a, a straightforward quote or, or just a word. So again, I'll just add that weight onto there. Have a tidy up, put the kettle on, make a cup of tea, and then I'll be back. Everything is now stuck down, so I just want to add a few final kind of touches and details. So I'm going to go around the edge of the page, just adding in a kind of scribbly border. And I'm going to go over the edge of where the torn advertising page is. Almost in a kind of barbed wire -y effect scribble. around like so <clears throat> and then I've got a white pen a uh, white paint pen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come back in and just add a few kind of white splatters just on the surface just to kind of finish that off. A day of splatters. <laughs> All right, so where I've splashed, hopefully none's gone in my coffee. <clears throat> so I just need to leave that for a few seconds just to dry. Or give it a helping hand. And then just to finish off, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water onto <clears throat> my craft mat and I have a Stabilo um, watercolour oil pencil. So all I want to do is just go around the edges of those quote blocks says forgetting to speak because he was concentrating and then I'm just going to activate them with water which will just give them a little bit of a kind of watery shadow But don't worry if it feels like it's gone a bit too heavy. Just grab some more water. And you can diffuse it. Just 
just like that. Just like that. Okay, once again, just give it a quick blast. And then I think what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of that shadow. I know it's got its own bit of shadow there anyway. And then just a little bit under here. Maybe just a little bit there. So if I just activate that underneath. And like I said, you can always diffuse it again if you think that it's too heavy. clean water. Just diffuse it away. It does react again even when it's dry. So if you think you've gone too heavy, don't worry too much about it because you can always come back in later on. And just lift some. Just like I'm doing here and then I can just just gently tap it and that's going to just lift it off I think I'm pretty much now happy with that. So let me just have a quick tidy up. I'll dry that because it does need it. There we go. And then what did I do with my blue pen? It's there right in front of me okay so all I'm going to do now is um I forgot what date it is today it's Saturday the 10th wow already February the 10th already oh so that is my art journal page for week number six, I think it is now. So fractured. I think that works rather well. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this art journal page for week number six, fractured for the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. Um, as per usual, that's the URL on the screen there. If you want to join us over in our Mission Inspiration Facebook group for the weekly art challenges, and there is a clickable link below this video too. So don't forget, please give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed watching it. Don't forget, you can also share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.